are so lost. My FFA students just said that they want to do the food science and technology career develop event, but I've never even heard of it until right now. I'm just so lost. I have no idea where to start. Don't worry. I did the food science CD as a high school student. It was a great opportunity, and I ended up majoring in food science. I can totally help you out. Wow, that's perfect. Let's get started. Okay, so first of all, what is food science? Food science is the study of biology, chemistry, and physics behind the manufacturing and processing of food products. And the Food Science CDE allows students to learn more about the technical as well as the practical aspects of food science. And this is aspects that they can later apply in their career as a food science professional. And the Food Science CDE is a team and an individual event. So this allows them to develop their teamwork as well as their leadership skills. Wow, that sounds like an awesome opportunity for students. What, what else do I need to do? What about the event? Like, what do they do there? So the event has a total of four parts. And so first they have the objective test, then they have practicums, the food safety and sanitation activity, and then finally the team product development scenario. Four parts? Oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. I'm gonna need your help. Don't worry, I can totally help you out. Let's first start with the objective test. Perfect, let's get started. Students will be asked to put all of their answers on a Scantron during the event. The main purpose of the test is to evaluate individual contestants' basic knowledge on the principles of food science. To study for the test, please look at the list of references in the CDE handbook, which contains links to resources like the USDA, food science books, and other food safety sites. Each person has 60 minutes to complete the 50-question test. So will the students need to know about food safety programs for the objective? Yes, the students will need to know about prerequisite programs like um, HACCP, which is Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points, as well as FISMA, which is the Food Safety Modernization Act, and GMPs, or Good Mo Manufacturing Practices. And all of those will be important for not only this objective test, but as well as the practicums of the CDE, which is the second part. Practicums? What are practicums? Ugh, please explain this. Okay, so there are three practicums to the event. So first is problem solving, and then there is food safety and quality, and sensory evaluation. So looking at problem solving, students will be asked to solve math problems that relate to food science. Do you have any examples of these? Well, for example, they could be asked to calculate the overrun of an ice cream mixture, or the amount of calories that they find in a slice of pizza. Overrun? How would they know how to calculate what that is? So if they are asked to calculate overrun, they'd be given the pertinent information in the question as well as the equation. And then for looking at calories for a slice of pizza, they would just need to know the conversion between the weight of the food component into calories. So for example, fat would be 9 calories per gram. Wow, okay. So what's the next practicum? Come on, I'll show you. Great. Okay, so there are two parts to the food safety and quality practicum. The first is the customer inquiry. What's a customer inquiry? So customer inquiry is often a concern which happens through a call or an email from a customer about a product. For example, it could be a customer concerned with the color of their french fries, them being darker than what they expected. So how are the answers formatted for a customer inquiry? The students will be given five scenarios where they will have to evaluate the inquiry as a food quality or food safety concern. A food safety concern could be a metal shard in the product, while a quality concern could be the color or appearance of the product. Once determined if it is a quality or safety concern, the student will evaluate if the hazard was chemical, physical, or biological. For example, the dark appearance of french fries would be considered a quality concern because it wouldn't cause harm to the customer if they chose to consume that product. And then it would be considered chemical due to enzymatic browning causing that product to be a darker color. Therefore, the final answer would be quality and chemical. That makes sense. So what's the second part? So the second part of the practicum relates to product specification compliance. And so with this, individuals are going to be given five questions or scenarios that relate to product specifications. Product specifications can be anything from cooking temperature to final pH of the product or nutrition. And so when looking at studying for product specifications, you should really look at what are the compliances for cooking temperature, especially when you're looking at meat products and important acidified products like canned goods. So can you give me an example of a product specification? 
well, for acidified products like canned salsa, the pH should be 4.6 or lower. If the final pH is 6.2, that indicates that the product is not in compliance with food law. Interesting, so students should have basic knowledge of food regulations. Yes, and last but not least, let's move on to the sensory evaluation practicum. Consuming food, awesome! Yes, let's go downstairs to the sensory evaluation room. Great! So, welcome to the sensory boost. And so students will be asked to participate in four triangle tests and identify 10 aromas. What's a triangle test? A triangle test is when students are given three food samples. One of those samples is different from the other two. The student will have to determine which sample is different. So participants will be asked to identify the differences based on aroma, visual cues, flavor, and textural differences. So for example, they could be given skim milk and whole milk. So they would tell the difference on thickness as well as texture. What about the aroma identification? Students will be given 10 test tubes containing different aromas and coffee as a palate cleanser for smelling between samples. They'll be asked to smell the sample, then the student should record the answer on the sheet provided to them. So what kind of aromas would they expe be expected to know? Typically, they're going to be household aromas like garlic, lemon, or chocolate. There will be a list of potential aromas given. Alright, so what about the rest of the contest? Let's go upstairs and I'll show you the last part. For the food safety and sanitation activities, students will be given a situation and they'll have to utilize their knowledge about GMPs, food sanitation, as well as handling and proper storage in order to write a sanitation report. A sanitation report? What's that? So, a sanitation or safety report will include degree of concern and corrective action relating to the situation they're provided. Corrective action? Degree of concern? What are those? So degree of concern relates to how concerning is that situation. So is it a major or a minor concern? Um, and then corrective action is what can they do um, to correct that situation? Do they provide more training to the individual? Um, do they ask them to remove their jewelry? Um, and so various corrective actions that they can think of. Interesting. So are these typically written scenarios? It can be. It can also be pictures. Some pictures in the past have been individuals with no shoes on or cut gloves, both of which are examples relating to good manufacturing practices that were spoken to earlier. The final aspect of the event is a team event focused on product development. Each team receives a scenario describing the need for a product in a potential market segment. The objective is to design a new product or reformulate an existing one. For example, in the past, students were asked to make a high-protein granola mix utilizing 6 out of 10 ingredients. Each student will be required to design a package, product name, and label, and nutritional facts. They have 60 minutes to complete the scenario, with a 10-minute presentation about the product. So what type of information do they need in this presentation? It is important to include information on the product label, finished packaging, GMPs, HACCP, FISMA, nutritional labeling, and an ingredient statement. Throughout the presentation, it is key that all members speak and participate. So what about a HACCP plan? Do they need to make a whole one? No, the main objective is for them to figure out how they would process their product and the possible food safety concerns while processing their product. So for example, they could point out some critical control points with the cooking temperature in order to get the main overall objective of possibly what their HACCP plan would look like. Gotcha. So what about nutritional information? What do they need to know about that? So they will be given the nutritional information of their ingredients, and so from the nutritional information of their ingredients, they should be able to provide nutritional information for their final product. Wow, this has been so helpful. Thanks so much for your help today. I feel so much better about this. You're welcome. I'm so excited to see your students